I feel like something so juicy is gonna come out. Like he did it. So now there is belief that maybe the evidence that we've been given of Mika's unaliving might not be so black and white. I knew it! And I am so grateful that I am not the only one that thought this whole case was still weird, even with the answers that have come out. Hi, my name is Shane, if you are new, and welcome back if you're returning. Today, we are continuing our talk about the Mika Miller case. Very quickly to summarize, if you haven't seen my past couple of videos covering this case, Mika Miller was married to JP Miller. After various trips to mental health institutions, her marriage seemed to be falling apart, depression, so on and so so forth, ended up taking her own life with a firearm. Her cause of death has been released along with a timeline with timestamps on surveillance photos, videos, so on and so forth. So it seems like at this point, okay, we can wipe our hands clean, right? So wrong, and that's why we're here making another video today. The family is continuing seeking justice for Mika. I am not a private investigator. I am not a criminal investigator. I am simply a true crime fan who will come across cases like this from time to time. They are current and it, it, it's fascinating in a morbid sense. And I wanna just get on and talk about it and voice my opinion and maybe have a little bit of a conversation about it. <laughs> Excuse you. I'm gonna get started on my makeup to summarize my last video and what was seen in the timeline because it's gonna segue into today's video. Basically, Miko was seen leaving her house. She was supposed to be at work on a Saturday. She had gone to a gas station slash like convenience store, bought a drink, allegedly drove herself to a a uh, local park made a 911 call telling the dispatcher that she was in major distress and basically said I'm about to unalive myself I want my body to be found when I do so. She disconnects the call. The dispatcher tries to locate the cell phone, can't locate the cell phone. They end up finding her body in the water. Okay, that's where we left off. Now the surveillance cameras that had shown her leaving her house and going to the store, I had taken a quick peek at those videos and photos that the press released and somebody caught something. I didn't the first time and I just wanted to mention it. Somebody had caught that the photo of Mika actually purchasing the firearm at the pawn shop did not have a timestamp. And this creator also noted that one of the photos that did have the timestamp, it almost looked like it was photoshopped because of like the landscape in the background and the numbers, like one number was a different font. So now there is belief that maybe the evidence that we've been given of Mika's unaliving might not be so black and white. So I found a couple really great TikToks who are talking about this exact topic. So I'm gonna let them play and we're gonna talk about them a little bit. The whole AI and robot thing seems like a really good idea, but we also kind of know that it can also go really wrong really fast. Especially with content coming out recently, we have like AI generated songs now. We have software that can change your voice, change anybody's voice. You can just put speech or text. There has been scams of families getting phone calls from loved ones saying that they were in car accidents to lure them out of their house or maybe try to get money out of them. So what we're about to talk about is very real. We can't deny that that is real. So there is a theory that possibly the the phone call that Mika made to 911 allegedly might not even have been her. FBI agent, and this update on the Mika Miller case is unbelievable. We've been reviewing all of the comments you guys left on our last couple videos, and several people have brought up the theory that, that Mika's voice on the 911 recording could potentially be AI, that she didn't actually make the call. There are also reports that JP's lawyer specializes in the use of AI. This is all alleged, of course, that someone could take an audio recording of their voice, upload it to a software, give it a script, and get an AI-generated clone of their voice in less than one minute. And surely you would know if you were hearing the AI version of someone's voice, right? What if I told you that you're listening to an AI-generated clone of my voice right now and I have yet to actually speak in this video? Would you believe that it's possible then? So what you just heard was a cheap, free, AI-generated program that recreated my voice, got pretty close, pretty close. So all the allegations in the Mike and Miller case that AI was used to call 911, uh, 
I have to be taken seriously at this point. I did not realize how advanced this stuff and how scary this stuff is getting. So uh, it just has to be considered. It's part of the case. We're going to stay on this thing. There is more to this. Thanks for your questions and comments. Keep them coming. Oh my goodness. Ah! It, it's real. We've seen this before. We've seen this happening. And the fact that this AI... It, oh my gosh, and the fact that uh, they had ties to somebody who could be like helping them do this. Oh my gosh. The next TikTok I'm going to show you is actually a stitch of the creators. I'll, I'll tag both of them down below. This creator thinks it's total BS. She thinks everything is just lining up too perfectly. Not making a lot of sense. Let's see what she has to hear. What? <laughs> let's see what she has to... Let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> and it's so crazy because Micah Miller's dad just released statements today saying that he believed that that phone call was not Micah Miller. It didn't even sound like her. And he believed that it may have been AI generated or something like that. I don't mean to interrupt, but even her dad doesn't believe that it was her that made that call. I mean, come on. I'm a mom and I know my kid's voice. If he's saying that he doesn't even think that's her... I, I kind of believe him. Micah Miller, I don't believe it for one second. I really, I just literally don't believe it. And the reason I don't believe it is because it's too convenient and too tied up and too literally, specifically, like here we have her on tape. She called in. Did y'all hear the 911 call? We all know. I, I literally, I looked up some apps online. There are apps that change your voice. Wasn't Trump sent to say that to somebody one day that they had an app and let's look up the phone number and see who really called. I mean, there's texting apps where you can't even trace them back. And the, the 911 operator, they weren't able to locate the cell phone. That's because it didn't come from her cell phone. It came from another cell phone using an app or a texting thing or a burner phone. And it's an AI thing. This is the problem. That young woman did not do what they're saying she did period. There was another woman that helped her over off the planet. Okay. So this would technically be murder and not at her own hand. So I don't believe for one minute what they're saying, and you're not going to change my mind. It's way too convenient that this young woman has herself on video buying a gun. She goes and she Googles where to do this. She lives in the area. So she definitely knows the parks period. And she Googles, and then she's found in the water because water decomposes everything. Hello. So she couldn't just do it, like, on the ground. She had to do it in the water, and then the gun had to be found in the water. And then it's all neatly wrapped up, and her husband and the girlfriend or mistress or bitch-ass, you know, pick-me woman, literally, who whose husband drowned in a pool... See the connection? Drowned in a pool over here. Yes, he was a paraplegic, quadriplegic. So who let him go over there swimming by himself? Said nobody ever, okay? Said no one. No one. Suddenly he's passed away, dead. And now this young woman is in the lake, right? Since the girlfriend, mistress, person, whatever kind of person she is, since that person decided to be out of town, how convenient, like, She's going to do this to herself. So everybody leaves town. Okay. There's a young, youngish, kind of brunette with freckled haired woman, but young, 23, 24. And this is the person that helped commit this crime. I don't know who that is. I don't know how she's connected to the other two, if she's the child of one of the other two, but that's exactly what happened. Somebody helped this person commit the crime. That's what I'm feeling. This woman was brilliant. So one, she brought up the whole water situation where, again, if she even made that phone call, she allegedly told the dispatcher that I want my body to be found. I want my children to find me or like, I, I, I want them to know where I am. So why are you going to go into the water? It's going to cause decomposition. Your body could wash away. Harder to find. See, and again, the fact that everything was lined up. Here she is leaving the house. Here she is buying the uh, firearm. Here she is arriving here. Here she is. Uh, and, and the other thing, too, is I didn't realize in one of my last videos that they couldn't ping her cell phone. Allegedly, it didn't come from her cell phone. She didn't, she didn't have the cell phone. It wasn't her cell phone that made the phone call. 
allegedly. I have one more TikTok to show you from a creator called Justin on TikTok. Y'all, this is mind blowing. Micah's dad and sister did an interview last night and dropped some information that basically changes everything that we've been told on so many different levels. Let's just start with the 911 call. Basically, her dad said that that did not sound like her. Whether or not it's AI, that's still up for debate, but said that basically the voice on that phone did not sound like her, was not the way that she spoke. Next, let's talk about the weapon. Apparently, days before she died, she had spoke to her father, saying that she felt she needed a weapon for protection. And for what it's worth, her dad also said that she knows how to Wait a minute. A oh my gosh. Wait a second, because I kind of assumed that if Mika... I'm sorry. This lipstick dried out on me. If Mika was going to buy a weapon for anything, it was going to be for her protection. So I didn't necessarily think like her buying a weapon was so far-fetched, especially with the stalking and harassing and so on and so forth, everything that has come forward about her. In my opinion, she was buying it for protection. And I think it was used literally the opposite. Next, let's talk about the weapon. Apparently, days before she died, she had spoke to her father saying that she felt she needed a weapon for protection. And for what it's worth, her dad also said that she knows how to use a weapon, that she grew up with them, she was trained on them, and knew exactly what she would be doing with one. Now, regarding the day that Micah died, Apparently, there were multiple casings found on the ground, including a bullet hole, or what looks to be a bullet hole, in a nearby tree. Her dad also mentioned a lot of bruising on her hands and her arms, and actually said that it looked like somebody had grabbed her, like grabbed her arm, had grabbed her wrist, um, and tried to move something up towards her head. He also said that there were scratches on her that had blood in them, meaning that those would have had to have happened before she passed away. And he felt very confident that there was a struggle that occurred prior. Now, Michael's also been talking to law enforcement, and according to him, he feels that law enforcement didn't really put forth any effort. No GSR testing. The cremation was rushed, which wasn't law enforcement. That was JP. But they didn't really check to see if JP was where he said he was. He said he's not seen any photos that anybody could have been driving that truck. And at this point, they're just taking his word for it, and there's been no real investigation. There's going to be a lot more of this. I'll be discussing this later today as well. Uh, so stay tuned. Hit that follow button. But this changes so much. Okay, so he did unpack quite a bit there. I don't know how I feel about the lip. I just wanted to do something. That was a doozy. He had a little bit of information, but it was important information. First of all, so Mika allegedly has a phone call with her father a couple days prior saying that she needed a firearm for protection. I think the biggest piece of information from this TikTok is the fact that there are signs of a struggle. And don't miss what he said, that she had scratches on her body that had blood in them. You're not gonna bleed if you're already dead, so the scratches would have had to happen before she died. I will continue catching you guys up as this case progresses. This is, I feel like something so juicy is gonna come out. Like he did it. Allegedly, in my opinion, I don't know, but this is wild. Had a little bit of blush. Oh my gosh, this eye keeps swallowing the hair. I will keep you guys updated as more information comes out. I don't want to overdo the case to the point of where you guys are so sick of hearing it. I am on the lookout for some new cases that will catch my eye as well uh, to talk about, not just this case, but I will keep catching you guys up as I learn more about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe. Please consider. <laughs> Please, please give me a chance. <laughs> please subscribe if you, uh, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can show me by leaving a like. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.